Yeah, this time of year is always special because of the Royal Rumble. It's the start of the road to WrestleMania. And someone who knows the Rumble quite well joins me now on the Vaqueros Cafe and Cantina Hotline. Not only is she a six-time WWE Women's Champion, one of the great hosts of Grown Ass Women or Gaw TV on YouTube, also a fantastic country music artist, someone that I am privileged enough to get to see on Super Bowl Radio Row, but sadly because of everything, we got to do it by phone. It is Mickey James. Follow her on Twitter at Mickey James. Follow her on Instagram at the Mickey James. What's up, Mickey? How you doing? Uh, I'm so good. Thank you for that introduction. That's so sweet. Thank you. Well, you know, you're one of my favorites. I like I said, I love seeing you every year at the Super Bowl. Uh, it's it's sad that we can't be there in person in Tampa on Radio Row, but we're staying oh, no. safe and we'll make up for it next year in Los Angeles. I can't wait. And I love L.A. too. So, you know, that's, although Tampa, you know, the beaches, but L.A.'s got beaches too, I guess. That's, that's right. That's true. That's right. Silver, and we, lining, silver lining. That's and, where we're going. And we were in Miami last year. So, you know, yeah, that's I mean, you. Last time I saw you, we were at the Jamie Foxx party there in my on Miami Beach, and uh, it was so much fun. You and me and Joe Roderick, my buddy from St. Louis, and just yep. having a good old time. So let's let's catch up. Uh, what? Let's talk about your music career first. I know that you know, just like with wrestling, COVID has put a stop to a lot of stuff. But how's the how's the music career going? Um, uh, how are things great. with your songs? It's going great. Yeah. You know, obviously this is pandemic has put like a, a hiccup in everybody's kind of plans and, and has changed, I think, the way that we all have uh, started to do business. You know, like even I think this year I've really take, taken a step back just to kind of create more. So my next album that I'm coming out with and I, the one that I've been working on through this pandemic has been all stuff that I've written on. So it's all my own songs. So the next album that I'm coming out with. But I just, you know, put out a Christmas song. And I, I put that back out every year so everybody knows they can spread the holiday cheer. Um, but then I had, uh, with the love of a child, with Roosevelt, that we put out right before the pandemic um, for child help. And uh, other than that, you know, I've just been creating. I'm working with, I just met up with this uh, killer female, powerful uh, group out of um, Mississippi um, called Chapel Heart. Um so we started working on a song together, talking to them and just creating. And, and, you know, I live here in Nashville now. So we just bought a house here in Nashville. Um, cause I was kind of just traveling back and forth, back and forth between Richmond, Nashville, and then all over everywhere else I had to be, you know, for wrestling and life. Right. Um, so it's kind of cool to be, you know, I... centrally located here in Nashville because of the last 10 years or so I've just, would come to Nashville, come, come to Nashville to do music, come to Nashville to record, come to Nashville to write and all that stuff. And it was always like that, tra trying to figure out how to pocket all the time, you know? And so I think this is going to be so much better. It's going to be really great. I'm excited about it. It sounds like, it sounds like it'll work, yeah. work out well. You mentioned the Christmas song and I, it's called Christmas presents. If I remember correctly, yeah. such a wonderful song. Have you ever thought about doing a Christmas Christmas album? Um, no, well, yes and no, you know, when we wrote that song, um, and we released it, you know, year before last for the first time, when I wrote that song, you know, we were kind of talking about, oh, we should do it. I was like, you know, I just want to do one Christmas song in the sense of, and it was funny because we were actually going in to write like a comedic kind of Christmas song, um, just for fun, just to, just to whatever. But then we ended up really writing this really heartfelt kind of Christmas song. Cause when I sat down, I was like, you know, I, I listen to it's the same Christmas music that you hear every year. And it's a lot of the same songs, a lot of the same things. It's like, how can we say the same message, but say it differently? You know, and that whole, you know, your Christmas presents. This is what I think about the holidays. And obviously this, this pandemic has kind of, you know, let us kind of realize that a little bit more because so many people, we weren't allowed to go do our regular holiday traditions. You know, whatever, whatever your holiday is, you weren't, we weren't allowed to do it. We weren't allowed to go visit our families. We weren't allowed to, sit down around the table, which these are the things for me, like sitting around the table and enjoying a nice meal and actually having a conversation with my family, you know, loving conversations and, and stuff like that, that you don't get to actually do throughout the year, you know, 
And um, so that's kind of the message is like your Christmas presents is my favorite present. It's not about the gifts. It's not about what, what you buy. It's not about all these other things. It's just about being there and being present in the moment, you know? So, yeah. I get that. And it's, it yeah. was, it's a wonderful song. The video that you did with it, with your family is, is so good. Uh, just, you know, something I watched over and over during the, during the holidays, uh, I I had to laugh because seeing your husband, knowing what he does and knowing the the persona that he has to see him <laughs> in that realm, it's something I I almost never imagined to see out of your husband Nick. It was just so good. So uh, if that alone it makes that video worth just playing it over and over during christmas time when he starts singing along and his like little campy kind of it's so funny you know it was really special too because i was able to put my son and my husband in it but i also had my nephew in it and i thought that it was a really cool way too because you know um you know the cross reference with, with junior you know i lost my sister not too long before that before right. i shot i actually lost her last November to ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And that was her, you know, the junior is her son. And, and I, I decided to put him in the video because I felt like, you know, he is my family. He is my nephew, you know? And I think a lot of people didn't know that being that he is, he is a black boy. You know what I mean? He's, he's African American and, and intergender relationships are, are, have always been a thing of my sister's, you know, of my family, but it's something that like, especially in the times of like stuff like that, like where everything is going with black lives matter and stuff like that. This is like before the really before that whole thing happened. And it was just like I always felt like that there was this awareness and especially because I come from the country. And so that was sometimes not always uh, what would I say? Um, welcomed, I yes. would say, in the yes. country. You know what I mean? It's not something that was always welcomed, but it was something that my family and I guess because I grew up native american as well so there was so much mix of races in my family growing up so it was never one of those lenses that i really i understood because i had so many um african-american friends and and family members but it wasn't something that i was ever subjected to you know what i mean so it's just one of those weird dichotomies but i just wanted to put him because it was so special to me because i just lost my sister and I wanted him in there as part of my family because I thought, like, you know, and now when he watches, he's like, oh, God, I'm in the video. It's so crazy. <laughs> he's so funny. <laughs> he's so funny. But, yeah, it's just it was really, really special to me to to include him in that video and, and to include my family. And Nick is so funny. Like, I think that everybody recognized Nick when they see him as this very boisterous kind of cocky heel or baby yeah. face. Even when he's a baby face, he has a, you know, a sense of, you know arrogance or whatever about him and his character on television so to see him in this fun wholehearted kind of campy like situation it was really unique i think oh absolutely it's just something you you wouldn't expect from nick aldis you know we as you said uh and and believe me i understand about growing up with you know kind of the i don't know i guess unwelcome as far as uh, uh race relations go i grew up in northeast texas kind of it's it's a little there's a little bit of that there so i i totally get it, it. Is, well and it's crazy and it's crazy to think that it's still that way in pockets yes of america but it is and it's it is sad, and it's but just you're one right. of those things that you know you hope and you pray that through you know i've always been one like love knows no bounds you know what i mean love Absolutely. doesn't see color it doesn't see race it doesn't see sex love is love you know what i mean love so that's love. just me and and but, this world could use a whole lot more of it believe me yeah no uh, doubt. talking with mickey james the former six-time WWE Women's Champion, also co-host of Gaw TV, Grown Ass Women, with uh, Lisa Marie Verone, Victoria, and SoCal Val. How's that been going? Uh, I know you you three have had some great guests. Can you can you name a favorite guest? Oh, gosh. Uh, it's so hard because we have had some incredible, incredible guests, and we have some even more exciting guests coming up in the future, and I think this, I'm so grateful for Lisa and Val because this show has helped me keep my sanity through all of this. And so we kind of created it. It was always an idea of a, and a back pocket thing of like, hey, we should do a show or, you know, separately. Like I talked to Val several times about, hey, let's just do, we should do a show because she's so good at hosting. And her, that's really her strength is she's such a great host. And um, she would host stuff when we were at TNA together and stuff like Pillar Talk and these a lot of the backstage segments. And I don't think people realize how involved backstage Val actually was as far as producing the content and coming up with content and stuff like that. 
Um, so it was just a way for me. I felt like, you know, it was a way for all of us to shine and show our different personality types. We're very different. Even in the wrestling industry, our characters are very different. Our personalities are very different. Like it's just, you know, Val is very much the, the fashionista like makeup. She doesn't want to wrestle. She only wanted to like do interviews and maybe manage, but she doesn't want to wrestle because she bruises like a peach. She says, and then, whereas, Lisa has always been the tomboy. She's like always been, you know, she's not the girliest of girls. And I kind of always ride that middle. Like I can be fancy when I want to, but I can be, you know, a tomboy when I want to, I can, I, I can play both sides a little bit, you know, um, I'm just as comfortable in a t-shirt and jeans as I am in a, in a, you know, fancy dress. Well, not as comfortable in a fancy dress, mostly because the shoes suck. Always. It doesn't matter how pretty they are, they all suck. They hurt. I, I, I can only imagine, but I will but say. But they're so fancy. They, uh, in, in that, that, par- like that party I mentioned where we were together in Miami, you looked incredible. Just, you know, just absolute knocked it out of the park. So believe me, you, you. Can, you can do it very well. Uh, and you can find God TV, grown ass women TV on YouTube. Check it out. They do some fantastic stuff there. We had a chance to talk to SoCal Val a few months ago, and she was so excited about this. And she, you know, you could you could hear the enthusiasm, and I can hear it in your voice as well. Just a a lot of fun to watch. Um, oh, it's so great. It's just so lighthearted, you know, and it's just about like women, and and we have men on the show too. You know what I mean? But just talking about like, I think we we do so many hard hitting. That was kind of the, the common thing is like we do so many hard hitting wrestling interviews like what's your favorite match? Who's your favorite opponent? Who's this? It's a lot of the same questions. It's like sometimes we we have more candid and like uh, I think conversations or stories and stuff that are completely separate from the ring. It's more about like being on the road together or being on tour together or mm-hmm. just like memories after the show and it's that's literally what we say it's like after we would get done doing tv or doing our show we finally get to the next town we get to our hotel room this is probably what you're going to see is a bunch of of a couple of us sitting in our hotel room in our pjs with a bottle of wine just laughing and talking about stupid stuff so that's literally what you get you know and I... some real stuff a lot of real stuff but in a funny lighthearted just joke with us and come join us and laugh with us kind of way and i know a lot of guys that would love to do the same thing pjs and wine beer whatever hey and just tell tell silly tales that's lobby party that's right that's right (laughs) absolutely all right so let's let's talk a little bit you got royal rumble coming up this sunday you 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 know you had such a you've had such a great run so far and still going hopefully um let me ask you your favorite moment from Royal Rumbles of the past. Ah, uh, well, my personal favorite moment will have to be the fa- the time like in the Royal Rumble where that Trish and I had that moment where we had yes. we finally got nose to nose again because it had been ten years um, or so. I, I think it had been eight eight years or so. What was it? Two thousand five. Uh, it was over ten years since we had faced face to face. You know. Mm-hmm. Um up into that moment and it was like i was hoping and praying that the fans would react like you you always hope that like what you've done in the business has left a mark like people remember people like it meant something you know and so it was like we we often think that things and we say these things and people say these things but it wasn't until that moment that i truly i guess realized how powerful that storyline was you know for women's wrestling right and um because the people just erupted and it was, it was such like a a weird situation in order to make that moment happen in the first place. And so when the people reacted that they, the way they did, it just meant so much to me. You have no idea. Like I, I legit, there's a, you can watch it. If you go back and watch that moment and you see this stupid smile, like the joker come across my face, it's, I could not contain it. I was so happy because I was that, that moment was like, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you. And it's like, I, I think that, you know, throughout our careers, we have all these monumental moments. We have these championships or we have these goals that we've hit and, and you keep raising the bar and you keep raising your goals or whatever. But, you know, a lot of times I don't know whether it's we're trying to and this is just me. And it's like, I don't know whether I'm just trying to make sure I prove my, myself or my own worth or, or prove myself to other people or prove myself to myself, whatever that that is. But in that moment. You know, when the when the people can and all we did was turn and look at each other and, and the people erupted like it was just so magical and so special and then that moment we both kind of just looked at each other and was like yes yes they do remember what we did did mean something it was impactful 
And that was pretty awesome. That was a really, really awesome moment, especially in this time of like women's evolution where there's all these quote unquote boundaries being broken and glass ceilings being broken. And in my mind, I felt like it was such a hard long road to get to this moment you know and, and the the paveway that, that the the ground that we've been laid but set by Lita by Luna Vachon by mm-hmm. Sherry Martell by Trish Stratus by woman after woman after woman by Lo- Molly Holly by all these women to finally be able to get to this place where women are looked at as legit equals not just in the ring but on the pay scale all of these things that it's taken us a long time to get to and it's and it's just so magical to see and, and to see all these women thrive now. And it's cool to be for me now, 20 years in the business, 20 plus years in the business of, of having to see it from, you know, women looking at like novelty, you know, putting matches to now main eventing WrestleMania. These are leaps and bounds that I had prayed for since the day I first got into the business and it's happened. And it's so amazing to see. It's so, so amazing. And it's cool to be a part of it on this side too, and to still be a part of the company. And I don't know if I'll be at the rumble. I I'm excited for the rumble. I'm always excited for the rumble. Um, and there is going to be an all female world rumble. So mm-hmm. you never, never know. Never know. Dusted, That's right. I dusted off my boots. <laughs> just in case. Well, you know, they, they that's the, that's the, uh, long time adage in wrestling. You always make sure you have your gear with you just in case. So always. I oh, told, my, my bag still to this day is like always half packed. My gear, absolutely. My, my gear bag. It's like if you get the call, you never know. It's That's like, right. Oh, it's already half packed. Absolutely. Yeah. And this will be, I think this will be the fourth year they've done a women's Royal Rumble match alongside the men's Royal Rumble match. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, breaking those glass ceilings. In, in some you mentioned, you talked about the, the reaction when you and Trish finally got face to face. You know, it's something that we have missed for the last year because of COVID. Um, talk for a little, talk for a second about how important that fan reaction is, and how much it is missed right now. Because you know, yeah, you have the Thunderdome and the fans are virtual, but there's still something about that in person, impromptu reaction, for better or for worse, that just helps you. You know, helps motivate you. It it dicta- it almost dictates the pace of the match. Talk for a second about the importance of fan reaction in a wrestling match. Yeah, it is. We thrive. That that has been the biggest, I think, not hurdle, but the biggest difference maker, I think, in us as performers. Um, I think delivering our product and delivering our stories because we're so used to. And and I've talked to different athletes like. I talked to Bryce Wilson, who played, he's a pitcher for Atlanta Braves. And I, we had him on the show recently. And it's just because I wanted to get his input on this too, because every sport is a little bit different. And I feel like the electricity from the crowd, when you feel like you're running on empty, like as, as far as like any athlete, when you feel like you're running on empty and you have nothing left to give, that eruption from the crowd can give you so much life, you know, in those, in those desperate moments. And in those moments where you, where you're just, you know, dying, like you're just, you know, so for us, I think in wrestling and, and it was, it was definitely interesting and even interesting to go back and have to like work in the Thunderdome where the crowds are on the screen and they are reacting. It's not like they're, that's the beautiful thing is thank goodness for the Thunderdome. Thank goodness for the way that they've set it up now where the fans are on the screen and there's that genuine reaction that you can at least visually see from the people. Because I think that for me, whenever I'm telling my story, especially as a heel, or as a baby face, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I need to, like, I need that immediate reaction. I love to have that immediate reaction to know that I'm telling my story right. I want you to boo me out of the building if I'm being a bad guy. You know what I mean? Like, I want that immediate reaction and to not get that, to not have that. You don't, you always don't know until you get back to the back and then you've gone on the internet, I guess, to, to read what the comments and what the people felt of the match through that one. You don't get a real sense of, whether you're telling the story correctly, whether you're getting the right emotion that you want out of the people because you can't feel it out there. Whereas that immediate reaction from the people, you can see it in their faces, you can feel it, you know, and and that energy kind of just transmutes into the ring and you can use that energy so much more in that same sense of like when we're dog tired. I mean, I can do an hour of cardio and I will not be as exhausted as a 10 minute match. (laughs) I just won't. I won't. It doesn't matter. So it's like, 
when you when you're reaching down low for the for the rest of what you got to give you know like that eruption from the crowd can really really fuel that fire for us and and not having that has been it's been a learning curve for all of us i think in every sport yeah. absolutely because uh and that i've always heard from wrestlers if they've been you know away for a while because of injury or just you know time off or whatever that's the biggest fear is when i come back are the fans going to react because that's the you know the 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 worst thing to have is you get in the ring and and the fans basically sit on their hands so i right. totally and get I that forget, and i think in today's society on how we digest um information and music and everything's kind of pushed so quickly you know what i mean and so you feel like oh i've been off tv 3 for 3 months for an injury and so it it for me like 3 months and this, even with my ACL injury, last time I saw you, I had an ACL injury. Yes, I remember. Um, but with that ACL, that was like a year, you know, so to be able to come back, you're hoping like, oh, okay, well, the fans going to remember who I am or they, they should, but everything moves so quickly that there is the possibility that there's new fans that haven't seen you wrestle, even though I've been wrestling. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. for me, it's a little oh, bit absolutely. different because of my longevity and, and the business. But however, you know, some of the newer talents who have only been up on the roster for a year and a half or whatever, and they, and they get injured and then they come back and they're like, Oh, are the fan fans going to remember who I am? Because they really haven't had a chance to get to know that character, get to know that person as much, you know? And so you do, it is worrisome. It yes. is worrisome, but you know, absolutely. Absolutely. I just say you got to step into yourself and just own it. Right. Absolutely. Just be everything. Be it all. Before I let you go, uh, just a real quick update. How How is your family? How are everybody healthy and happy? And uh, yeah. you've been able to avoid COVID and all that good stuff. How, how's everybody doing? We've been doing? very blessed. I'm knocking on wood. We've been very blessed. We've been very smart, you know, um, and, and we take our precautions and we do our safety. And it, more so because, you know, my grandmother is elderly and I, and that was like the biggest thing is like, I don't want, I already know that she's elderly and, and you know, if, if she was to catch it, it would not be good, you know? So it was like, I was very adamant about like, we're taking these precautions, not just for ourselves because I have to get tested every time I go to work, you know what I mean? So I was getting, I'm getting tested on a weekly basis or whatever, but also I don't want to get, get it back to my grandma at all. You know right. what I mean? So we've been very, very cautious on all those things of like making sure we wear a mask and everything else. But it's just been a really, really unique and, and it's different to see like how people react on different things, you know, and I'm just like, I just want this thing to hurry up and be over. You know, I felt like I, in my mind, I felt like it should have been over already, but I think that there were so many people who are like, don't want to wear the mask or don't want to do these things. And I'm like, but you're, it's not just about you, bro. It's about everybody. Like yeah. you're being selfish. That's my opinion. And I know people are going to hate me for it, but I'm like, that's a very selfish decision. You know, I, that's just me. I agree. And I'm not a selfish person. Believe so. me, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I really do. Yeah. She yeah, is. So, but we've been very fortunate. We've been very fortunate. So thank goodness for that. Good. I'm glad to hear that. She is the former six time WWE women's champion, Mickey James. Follow her on Twitter at Mickey James on Instagram at the Mickey James catcher on God TV catch her when she's performing music i still say we need to get you down here to austin our sister station coke fm that does a lot of country music i think i think eric rains would love to have you in the studio to perform a song or two um oh my gosh i would love that i think we need to make that happen one of these days mickey it is so good to hear your voice i always love our encounters every year like i said we'll have to make up for it next year in los angeles but until then be safe, be well, all the best to your family, and we'll talk again soon. Oh, Stu, thank you so much. Thank you.